Hey guys, so it's Shane here from Laser Mobile, and today we will be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy S5, Samsung's most recent flagship. So let's get started. So to start off with the design of this device, on the front is a 5.1 inch display with regular buttons, so a real home button and two capacitive recent app button and a back button. On the back of this device there's a camera and a heart rate sensor and the home button has a fingerprint scanner integrated into it. Now the materials used in this device is on the back of the device it's kind of this plasticky leather thing and it kind of looks like a band-aid but it actually does feel really nice in the hand. On the sides, there's this fake chrome finish used, and on the front, it's glass, obviously. Now, on the top, you have your headphone jack. On the right, there's your power button, left, volume buttons, and on the bottom, there's your USB 3.0 charging port. And a lot of the ports are covered up because this device is waterproof. However, Samsung still maintain the removable battery and micro SD card. Now, this device isn't really waterproof, it's water resistant, which means that you can get it a little wet, spill something on it, but I would not recommend submerging it under water. You can check out the video on my channel for more info about this. Now, when it comes to hardware, this is the octa-core version of this device. So you can see me running Quadrant Standard Benchmark, and the score of this device is very high, as it is a 3.3 GHz combined processors. This device has a combined processor of 3.2 GHz, one quad-core processor clocked in at 1.3 GHz, and one at 1.9 GHz, 2 GB of RAM, and it has an Exynos 5 processor made by Samsung. It has a 5.1-inch 1080p display, 432 ppi, a 2800 mAh battery, and a quadrant standard score of 24,941. Now this device is very fast. In previous devices, Samsung was not able to make up for TouchWiz's bulky overlay over Android. However, this device is very snappy and I haven't had a problem with it. Now let's move over to software. TouchWiz is a nice software once you turn everything off. Some of the, However, it is a bit weird and it's definitely not the best Android skin when comparing to HTC Sense or even LG's new software or even LG's new um, overlay. However, TouchWiz gets the job done, and it has some nice features like ultra power saving mode, which enables you to turn the screen black and white to save a ton of battery, and only allows you access to certain apps like Messages, Mail, Google+, Calculator. So that's a very useful feature as well, as at 10% it can get you a full day of usage on standby time. Now when it comes to the camera, Samsung really did a great job. This camera takes amazing photos, and as you can see with the test images I'm taking, it can really zoom in as well. It has a quick autofocus where if you tap, it'll autofocus in 0.3 seconds. I really love that feature. It can also film in 4K, and as you can see, the 4K video is very, very crisp. However, you can only take 5 minutes of the video because it takes up so much space. So, the Samsung Galaxy S5 overall is a great device. On the back, it has a small speaker. It isn't that useful. It, can, it gets the job done. However, I don't really recommend it. So, if, this, if you want a device for someone who's always spilling or dropping your phone, spilling water on it, this is really the device for you. It gets the job done in the everyday world. And if you want the best smartphone Android camera right now, I'd go for the Samsung Galaxy S5. If you can get past TouchWiz, if you really hate TouchWiz, I will not recommend this device. However, I still like it. I mean, you can always just install a skin out. You can always just install a custom ROM over it, and you don't even have to use TouchWiz. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe down below. For much more content on the Samsung Galaxy S5, HTC One M8, iPhone 5S, and more, and it really does help me with my channel. Thanks for watching.